ladies and gentlemen good morning to you all i am delighted to extend a warm welcome to each one of you to the second edition of world food india 2023 today we convene in a nation where the journey of growth and innovation has been nothing short of prolific with a booming economy and the achievement of significant milestones india stands today as a land of plenty the land of opportunities steering the global food value chain with a rich resource base in light of the celebration of 2023 as the international years of millets and to bring the global food uh, processing industry together the ministry of food processing industries proudly presents the second edition of world food india 2023 our journey commences with an exciting exploration of a country and state session featuring uh, the state session for the day i would like to invite mr akhil kumar gawar director of food processing from the government of telangana to kindly uh, please take over thank you thank you so much uh, welcome to the uh, state session for the state government of telangana uh, i have uh, the privilege of a very esteemed panel here with me uh, i would like to uh, extend an invitation to the panelists here i'll begin with uh, mr chandramogan who is the chairman and founder of hatson agro private limited uh, it's the largest private dairy in india uh, he's a legend uh, of the industry and uh, somebody with that we all look uh, up to for his words of wisdom sir i invite you on the panel uh next i would like to invite mr akshay choudhary he is the vice president of gemini edibles and fats Pri uh, india limited uh, their brand uh, called freedom is very popular in the south of india they are the one of uh, one of the largest uh, players in edible oil uh, and india's largest uh, sunflower oil uh, manufacturers uh, it is my pleasure to invite uh, akshay on the next i would like to invite mr rajendra kumar bajaj he is the executive vice president and director at satake corporation limited satake is a japanese multinational one of the biggest uh, market share in terms of uh, rice milling equipments in the organized sector in india and worldwide uh, a very reputed uh, company in their own domain i would like to invite uh, rajendra ji on the next i would like to invite uh, dr jogi anand verma uh, he is uh, the vice president of ananda group of companies again uh, a company that is uh, a market leader in the uh, aqua space uh, and working very closely with us in telangana on ground breaking initiatives uh, jogi i welcome you on the rise next i'd like to invite manish um, mr manish mule is the ceo of alana group uh, processed food division they also have a very large uh, export oriented meat manufacturing unit based out of telangana uh, i would like to invite manish also to the thank you uh just as a quick introduction uh, uh, we the profile of the panel that we have selected here it represents uh, two things one uh, they all represent uh, expertise in a particular focus sector in telangana uh, also they have had practical experience of uh, coming to telangana and operating out of telangana and we feel that it would be best for us to communicate what telangana is through the experiences and wisdom of people who are already operating in the state so uh, we hope that they will be uh, brand ambassadors for the state of telangana and uh, lay out uh, what to expect for people who have not yet experienced operating in the state uh, just as a, a prelude to uh, the conversation that we start uh, uh, with our panelists here uh, for the interest of the audience uh, the larger online audience and uh, the panelists here Uh, sir i would like to quickly take you through uh, uh, the journey that telangana has taken up in the last uh, decade or so in a very very abridged format and uh, to just to give you although you might be aware of this and we would have communicated it earlier as well but uh, but just to put things into a very quick context uh, i would like to uh, make a brief presentation uh, to both the panelists as well as the audience here 
uh, as uh, most of you know india telangana is india's newest state it was the 29th state to uh, become the part of the union of india uh, it is located in the south central region uh, and over the last 10 years it's made tremendous leaps uh, economically culturally and socially at this point in time telangana is the highest per capita income uh, earning state amongst large states in india uh it is the highest uh, gsdp uh, growth uh, growth rate uh, uh, state in india amongst large uh, states telangana has the highest per capita power consumption uh, in the country telangana is the vaccine capital of the world and more recently it is the rice bowl of india at this point in time this is a sea change from where telangana was about a decade ago just to give you a reference telangana ranked 11th in terms of per capita income in the country about 10 years ago today it ranks number 1 in per capita income <laughs> if we look at uh, the situation of telangana and where it came from and how it actually came into being the story is very deeply rooted in agriculture and in water actually telangana is straddled by two perennial rivers krishna and godavari and yet it is one of the driest regions in india the reason for that is that the two rivers that flow uh, flow at a mean sea level of about 80 to 100 uh, meters and the elevation of the telangana landmass is about 500 to 600 uh, meters above mean sea level which means that the water although very close is not accessible to most of the uh people in the state of telangana this made irrigation a huge challenge 61% of the 40 million population in telangana is in the rural areas and agriculture and allied activity is the primary occupation of the majority with india focusing on dams and major irrigation projects since the 1950s uh areas like telangana actually lay unattended uh, with respect to irrigation infrastructure tanks and uh, small ponds which was a traditional irrigation system of telangana fell into disrepair through the 70s and 80s and in the 90s and early 2000s we saw the rapid rise in groundwater irrigation from the farmers there was a shift from community resources uh, of water to personal uh, resources of water and due to which uh, we had several issues like falling groundwater levels and erratic power supplies on top of that made agriculture almost untenable telangana was formed in 2014 and one of the uh, first things that the state government uh, initiated was uh, a holistic transformation of the agriculture uh, ecosystem of the state and the way we did that was through these seven drivers of transformation irrigation power investment support to the producers very robust and uh, deep rooted extension systems and timely availability of inputs to the product uh, uh, to the producers and farmers support on procurement and lastly food processing and warehousing irrigation is where the story started uh telangana has a unique topography and uh, across 10000 villages in telangana there are more than 45000 small lakes tanks and ponds in telangana historically the irrigation was tank based in telangana but over the uh, many years uh, it went into disrepair uh, but the state government took up a project called mission kakatiya it was one of the first uh, irrigation initiatives of telangana in which 27819 lakes and tanks were rejuvenated across the state this created uh, irrigation potential for 1.5 million acres across the state and uh, a significant uh, push on uh, the increase in production area in the state was started with mission kakatiya next we uh, the state government took up uh, several irrigation projects uh, uh, with the mindset of uh, lifting the uh, river from uh, river water from godavari and krishna uh, kaleshwaram lift irrigation project which is on godavari is the world's largest lift irrigation project 
Not just that, it was completed in a record time frame of four years. It lifts Godavari water with by half a kilometer and uh, irrigates about 9 million acres in the state. Similarly, uh, uh, a lift irrigation project on the Krishna River called the Palamuru Rangaridi lift irrigation project irrigates about 1.2 million acres uh, in the south of Telangana. Now. The impact of these projects in Telangana over the years is that the gross irrigated area in Telangana increased from 6.25 million acres to 13.56 million acres which is a 117% increase. Uh, creating new irrigation potential of 7.43 uh, million acres. Another interesting thing, sir, the global perception that is there is if you intensify, uh, if you intensify agriculture, you have a uh, negative impact on environment. And uh, one of the areas of concern is groundwater depletion, which was traditionally the case in Telangana. Over this uh, time frame, in the last decade, sir, Groundwater level in Telangana have increased by 56 percent, which is unprecedented in the country where at everywhere else we are seeing a decrease in groundwater levels. We saw 56 percent increase in groundwater level in Telangana. Uh, the second initiative that was taken up by the state government was uh, on power. We were a power deficit state when the state, go state was formed, uh, but with more than 38,000 crores of investment in the transmission and distribution system, uh, uh, it, generation capacity is significantly improved now. 18,567 megawatt is the installed generation capacity in the state. Uh, Telangana is one of the states that provides 24-7 quality power to all agriculture households across the state. What this has uh, done is it has created a sea change in the situation where people had erratic six hour supply and the real appreciation of this is from the farmers to whom the power supply used to come in the night and they had to wake up at 2 a.m. in the night to go and irrigate their fields which now with 24 hour availability of power uh, across the state that situation completely completely transformed. Third area of uh, intervention was on uh, investment support to the small farmers. One of the biggest uh, problems that the farmers have is input availability uh, at the right time and one of the reasons for lack of input availability at the right time is the lack of working capital and liquidity with the farmers uh, at the right time. So what the state government did was they, we came up with the uh, initiative called Raitu Bandhu where at the start of the uh, cultivation season. Uh, input support subsidy is uh, directly trans, uh, transferred to the bank accounts of each farmer based on a completely online system which is uh, 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 driven on a uh, digital land uh, registration system. So through this mechanism about 72,000 crores worth of investment support subsidy has been dispersed since 2018. Uh, to about 7 million uh, farmers across the state. Uh, other initiatives which helped uh, bolster this uh, 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 rural e uh, ecosystem are schemes like Rai to Bhima, which is a group farmer life insurance uh, scheme and an initiative to digitize land records across the state with a portal called Dharani. At this point in time, all the uh, land parcels uh, in Telangana are uh, digitally registered and uh, uh, all uh, uh, transactions of lands and title are done through this system making it extremely extremely simple and uh, one of the biggest uh, concerns that the farmers across our part of the world is that uh, their concerns about titles and their concerns about whether their land is with them and can they trust transactions on the land. Now the state, this kind of a system actually puts the power back into the hands of these uh, farmers where they do not have to go from uh, post to post uh, when it comes to uh, land transactions. The next initiative that we took was on extension systems. Uh, 
one extension so the state government has divided the uh, uh, the cultivation area across clusters of 5000 acres each there is one extension officer that has been allotted to each 5000 acres there is physical infrastructure in the form of raitu vedikas that has been created uh, uh, across each cluster there are 2601 raitu vedikas that is uh, that are uh, internet enabled uh, uh, that are uh, created in a manner that uh, extension activities uh, can very very quickly uh, mobilize farmers and uh, conduct training programs and uh, enhance input availability which is the next initiative that was taken up uh, so there is uh, so telangana is one of the states where input availability historically was a problem but that situation has significantly changed now uh, with the online fertilizer licensing systems uh, and with very unique initiatives that are being taken up at this point in time in the state of uh, telangana with input availability which we will shortly see unfold the next step uh, uh, is in terms of providing procurement support telangana is one of the states that provides widespread support on public procurement on commodities such as rice on maize uh, on several other uh, commodities which the state mark fed procures uh, telangana also happens to have a very robust shg ecosystem that participates in active public procurement uh, across the state and now we are uh, increasingly uh, moving towards assisted procurement for private companies through the uh, SAG ecosystem as well as the uh, various uh, infrastructure that the state machinery has at its disposal. Uh, uh, a testament to uh, the commitment of the state government for public procurement is that uh, in 2014 where the paddy procurement uh, by the state government was 2.4 million metric tons in 2023 the state government procured 13.2 million metric tons which is a 450% increase in uh, uh, procurement across the state <laughs> similar work was done in uh, other grain procurement also with the uh, 191% increase overall Lastly, the focus now has increasingly shifted towards food processing and warehousing with the increase in uh, production uh, uh, profile of the state and the uh, productivity increase across the state. Uh, there is a huge potential and a huge gap actually which we have seen in terms of the processing capabilities in the state and, uh, and therefore the state has taken up uh, uh, a uh, huge uh, initiative of creating very large scale uh, processing uh, capabilities across the state. Uh, we have created 10,000 acres uh, uh, of industrial infrastructure across 14 special food processing zones. Uh, since 2014, the state government has seen grounding of about 7,000 crores worth of fixed capital investment. But at this point in time, we have three times of this in the pipeline which is getting implemented. We foresee that in the next two years uh, or so, we would have quadrupled the fixed capital base on food processing uh, sector in the state. Uh, uh, likewise in warehousing, there has been more than two times increase in the warehousing capacity in the state with uh, which was uh, 3.9 million metric tons in 2014, which today stands at 7.38 million metric tons uh, in 2020-2023. The result of this uh, and I'll quickly conclude uh, my presentation with the, uh, the next five slides, is a renewed sense of uh, uh, revolutions that have come through across five different sectors as a consequence. We call uh, Green Revolution, uh, which uh, historically was uh, one of the most celebrated uh, 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 events in Indian uh, economic history. Uh, similar green revolution is being foreseen at uh, in Telangana, where over the last uh, uh, eight years or so, there is 160% increase in crop, crop production, 83% increase in gross crop area, 152% increase in total crop produ uh, crop production, and 248% increase in paddy production in the state, which went up from about 7 million metric uh, metric tons to 24 million metric tons over the last uh, eight years or so. Uh, and on top of this, uh, which I was saying that green revolution, uh, where agriculture becomes an enemy of environment, we see in Telangana that uh, 
द फॉरेस्ट कवर इन तेलंगाना हैज इंक्रीज बाय एट परसेंट ऑल दिस वाइल्ड वाइल द इफेक्ट द इरिगेशन हैज इंक्रीज सब्सटैंशली साइड बाय साइड एंड I'll 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 come back to a, a a quick thought, which is uh, quite unique in the state of Telangana, where we are seeing a rapid growth in urban development, a rapid growth in rural development, and both are being done in a manner that is environmentally sustainable and contributes to the the global uh, theme of uh, uh, climate change and being done in a very climate smart manner. uh consequently the next revolution that came through was uh, the blue, blue revolution there has been a 45% increase in fish and prawn production and more importantly today we have created 500000 hectares of water spread area across various reservoirs tanks and ponds which happens to be the highest in india and therefore uh, creates a huge potential for freshwater fisheries in telangana uh the next uh, area of focus has been the area of edible oils and uh, hence uh, the yellow revolution where uh, the state government today is focusing on a huge amount of crop diversification and moving farmers away from uh, grain crops to high value crops and oil seeds uh, are one of the uh, the most promising areas in this area Uh, apart from various oil seeds that are already present in telangana telangana state government also has a huge mission on oil palm where we intend to bring about uh, 2 million acres under oil palm cultivation over the next 5 years uh consequently uh, the availability of water increases availability of fodder which increases uh, productivity of livestock and therefore we have seen a 148% increase in sheep population and 200% increase in per capita meat availability in the state poultry has been a, a traditional area of strength in telangana and uh, that has also seen a significant increase with a 158% increase in egg production in the state uh white revolution is uh, again a consequence with the uh, fodder availability water availability the whole uh, dairy ecosystem has also benefited uh, tremendously and we foresee that telangana which is actually a dairy deficit state uh, at this point in time over the next few years we foresee that uh, the situation will change and we will become one of the leading producers of milk and milk products based out of telangana uh i would like to acknowledge uh, the presence of uh, mr sodi here sir thank you so much for making time for being here and uh, it's a pleasure sir with this uh, i will quickly conclude my presentation sir and uh, i i would start uh, uh, with uh, uh, thanking you for making time for being here and i would like you to individually talk about uh, your own sectors which you have uh, uh, insights on and wisdom on uh, to provide to all of us here both in the context of uh, the country and how you foresee the sector uh, playing out over the next few years and the role that telangana can play uh, in the sector's development and what we should learn uh, from the industry and take into account for the next 10 years that uh, uh, we will uh, uh, together work with uh, i'll start with uh, mr chandramogan uh, sir on uh, the dairy sector and uh, your experience uh, recently with operating and working in the state of telangana sir uh, request you to provide your words of wisdom thank you for the opportunity uh, we have a very pleasant experience in telangana in fact i always believe that the government is there to control uh, regulate and uh, they have authorities and telangana is a little different state they ask for appointment and come to meet us in chennai and they want us to come for a, putting up an industry there so they invite felicitate motivate and coordinate and we are very happy to be associated with telangana and we have a dairy unit we also have an ice cream unit which is supposed to be the most modern unit of the country and uh, this ice cream unit is about 150 kilometers 
north of Hyderabad. The real reason why we looked at this particular site earlier to that was, this is logistically convenient to reach different parts of the country. So distance to go to south, north, east, west, everywhere probably Hyderabad looks to be a great destination. That too little north of Hyderabad because our business requires logistical challenges. And in Telangana, once when we put up the factory, I had a very pleasant meeting with the minister. And the type of questions what he was asking was not like a minister. It was like a, I can say, a CEO of a company. When will you start the industry? How many people will be employed? How many people will be benefited? And uh, what is that uh, you expect the state to do? So all these questions were very inviting. And then finally he asked me, how many, how, much, how many months it will take? I said, 18 months. He said, what is the breakup of 18 months? I said, two to three months for getting the government formalities cleared and the rest of the 15 months for the project. What formalities from the government, he asked. I said, every government has got a formality and I don't know what the formalities you people have. He said, tomorrow you can break the stone and start the construction. Apply simultaneously. Today, what he did, said, he has done it. And our project is already commissioned at the stipulated time. We are happy to be associated. And whenever we come to the government officials, they receive us with a smile and try to clear all the obstacles, whatever we have. And we are very happy and fortunate to be part of Telangana and part of their success. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, I would now request Manish uh, to present his views on the sector and the state. No, no, so thank you so much, uh, Akhil, for this very ex uh, comprehensive presentation. Uh, there's a reason why these achievements which are there uh, is, is, a, is a manifestation of what your intent has been from 2014. And across the five platforms, the revolution you talked about, it's there. So uh, really appreciable work. I think two things stand out when we talk to you as opposed to, or maybe with as, as, as along with other states that we have discussions with is this. One is ease of access, uh, our ability to talk to you, to reach out to you, whether it is you or the secretary or even the honorable uh, minister. That is a very important part. The second part is that when the discussion happens, and even more important I would like to say, is the follow up on that. That is very rare because in a, in a professional environment, it is we are getting used to it. And thanks for setting up this benchmark, but that's amazing. So Alana has a 30-year-old uh, history with, uh, with, the, with, the, with the state, of course. And based on that performance that we see happening, uh, we also have decided, as you will be aware of, that another 200 crore investment in our pet food facility is coming up. So it's, it's exactly what we are talking about. So we are also saying that, yes, this is the state which is really progressive. They talk what they want and they mean it. And that's more important. So absolutely, we are all there for you. Thank you so much. Jogi, uh, I would like you to weigh in on the uh, fisheries sector. I know you've been there uh, since the last couple of decades operating out of uh, uh, what was United Andhra Pradesh then and now uh, uh, AP. Uh, lend us your thoughts. Sure. Uh, thanks, Akhil, and uh, thanks, everybody. And uh, I think, I mean, uh, right next to me is all the, the legends of the industry, whatever Akhil has said about the Blue Revolution or the White Revolution. I mean, I'm the only guy who is from the Blue Revolution here. I think, I mean, I'm from the state of Andhra, but then uh, focusing more on Telangana right now. The point here is, I think, I mean, there's a lot of opportunity right now in Telangana because I earlier it was not focused on uh, fish and shrimp farming. Now with the abundant uh, water irrigation project that has come up in Telangana and uh, the way the Department of Food Processing led by the minister, the secretary and the director here, I think I, mean, I should not say this on the stage, but then the director was so forward thinking to make sure that whatever the promoter wants to make sure that the investment goes in the right way. It was always there and uh, it was a very supportive work from the government so that uh, the private investor doesn't feel uh, let down at any point of time. I mean, I can say this anywhere. 
but then uh, it's hats off to the Telangana food processing team that have taken up. And uh, I think, I mean, uh, we have to applaud the minister, sir, who was personally taking up to make sure that the investment happens in the right direction with the focus on creating employment, which is going to, which was the primary thought process, and creating an infrastructure which is for the long run. I think, I mean, uh, for us, uh, Ananda is focused in uh, setting up the first uh, aqua park in Telangana, which is going to be coming up very shortly, and uh, we have already signed up uh, and we have been awarded the letter of intent by the Telangana state and uh, we're going to start uh, the freshwater aquaculture system right now and uh, it's going to have uh, hatchery, farming, processing and exports from Telangana and our major focus would be to streamline and focus on a different market sector which is close to Hyderabad to do live fish and shrimp sales. So this is going to be uh, even for the domestic market and even for the international market where uh, the Telangana state government was very proactive and uh, supportive. Thanks, everybody. Uh, part of our uh, success story uh, on the uh, green revolution uh, with the paddy production, uh, we have uh, uh, Mr. Bajaj here, who has been uh, 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 also a participant and an observer of how the whole paddy situation has changed in the state. And we are working closely on uh, uh, pushing for uh, processing in this area. Uh, we've recently come up with a rice milling policy, which is extremely lucrative uh, for, and anybody who's interested in uh, uh, paddy uh, should have a look at uh, the policy that we have come up with. Uh, I would request Mr. Bajaj to lend his uh, thoughts and, uh, and what he feels is the outlook going forward. Thank you, Vakil. Thank you, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, good morning, brother. It's a great opportunity to interact with each one of you here. And uh, I'm very much uh, privileged to be a panelist among all the dignitaries here with senior people like Mr. Uh, Chandra Mohan and all. I would like to say that uh, Satake Corporation, a Japanese multinational I'm representing, is uh, a 125 year old company. And we are interacting with uh, every state here in India since last more than 30 years. Before, before 2014, uh, it was Andhra Pradesh. And uh, without a uh, comparison, because uh, the comparison does not exist, the way that we had a pace of growth after 2014, it's clearly remarkable. Like before 2014, we used to see people moving out of this state, setting up projects in Raichur and neighboring states. Paddy used to smuggle out. But now the situation is quite different. I can explain to you from my experience that uh, people are coming to this state now since last more than five to six years of uh, implementation of different policies. Uh, government has been very supportive in a manner that they have done a very accurate gap analysis. All the revolutions which you are seeing here, pink, white, green, etc. I think it's a clear amalgamation of gap analysis, process engineering, and timely implementation. Not only that, all these policies, I think they are uh, mass driven and paddy is one of them. We have seen a growth of paddy stock value from 2008. It was uh, total value was about 8,000 crores in the state of Telangana, which is now raised to 16,000 crores. It's a 99% jump actually. Compared to the next state in the country is Punjab, which is only 48% jump. So you can see uh, the policy manifestation, how it has yielded into the results for a common man. Not only the amount, like today they are producing 24 million tons of paddy. They themselves are consuming not more than 10. So the rest of the paddy is feeding the rest of the country through FCI schemes and other mechanisms. It is going out officially to feed the poor. All the schemes that our Indian government or state governments have uh, implemented during COVID and et cetera, they were fed through this rice. And the quality of this rice is very remarkable because export is being done right now. We look up forward to have a great association with the government and also the industrialist out here. The policy he talked about is a revolutionary policy and uh, I would like to put it on record that although the great people like Akhil and others have been working in the back doors, but we came into the picture just two and a half months before when we interacted with uh, honorable ministers and our chief minister in Telangana and the team of Akhil. In two and a half months, they could manifest the government order. 
with just such a short span of time with a policy which could affect not only the farmers but also the every industry and every household through rice i really congratulate for this great success and look forward to a great association thank you uh thank you mr bajaj uh i would now request uh, akshay uh, who's uh, uh, um, uh who operates out of hyderabad uh, and we are very glad uh, that uh, he's here with us and uh, i would like you to uh, talk about your journey uh, from the past and now uh, going into the future thank you akhil thank you uh, so much for the opportunity so you know we at uh, gemini edibles and fats we represent perhaps uh, the youngest or the most promising revolution in the state of telangana the yellow revolution we are into edible oils as a company also perhaps we are the youngest company we uh, started operations in 2010 among all the companies over here so edible oils in india has been largely import based 60 to 70% import based ever since the mid 90s domestic production had stagnated and uh, as our population grew consumption grew we started becoming import dependent to the point that today about 1.5 lakh crores or anywhere between 15 to 20 billion dollars is what uh, india is spending on importing edible oils which is a huge import bill i believe this must be the third largest import bill after crude oil and gold so that is a lot of money that is going to farmers around the world for our consumption which could actually benefit the farmers in our country and the prosperity of our country so now at a certain point right of course with the central government's directive as well the central government's vision on atmanirbharta on edible oils mission edible oils i believe telangana is one of the states which is really leaping forward in this revolution to try and increase the domestic oil seed production akhil has spoken about the oil palm cultivation that they are planning on i think 20 lakh acres 8 lakh hectares that itself could add 3 to 4 million tons per annum of palm oil uh, production in india today we are importing about 9 million tons of palm oil annually so just imagine 40% maybe even 50% of that could come from telangana alone so how much that will do to the uh, to the uh, economy of uh, the state and to the country and in other oil seeds as well they are focused on groundnut uh, they are really focusing on sunflower seed which for us is very promising of course we have the largest sunflower oil brand in the country and today sunflower is 99% imported so that uh that uh, led us to want to set up a our next manufacturing facility rather than a port based you will see everybody still setting up port based but we are we are seeing the progress that telangana is making domestically on this and we wanted to set up a manufacturing refining facility in telangana to do more of refining of domestic oils such as rice bran oils or even sunflower oils or palm oils which are going to be cultivated uh, domestically and as far as our experience goes we've just got the land allotment we've just completed uh, the land uh, uh, allotment and the agreement we met the minister when we met the minister i'm forgetting exactly when maybe uh, some months back so as mr chandramogan was describing he's uh you know he's almost like a ceo so he was asking us all the right questions uh, which itself you know initially you get very impressed and then he i think he spoke to uh, jay sir or he spoke to akhil and he said that uh, uh that they you know gemini is looking for land please find them the suitable land and they have to start proceeding uh, quickly so we thought that you know wow fantastic but of course you always have apprehensions that okay the minister said this but then you know down the line there will be the usual delays and it will take a lot of time what was amazing for us was that we were getting reminders from the tsic from akhil's department constantly that what are you doing where do you want to land when do you want to go visit the site so you can see that momentum in a way that inertia or that momentum which you call is is built from the government side or from the state government side which is highly unusual which really i think motivates us as well to put our best foot forward when we are dealing with them so our project uh, hopefully the ground breaking will start in the next 2 or 3 months and we hope to go, 
commissioned in the next 18 months and be a key part of uh, this uh, yellow revolution. I mean, you know, the more the merrier when it comes to edible oil refining and then crushing in uh, the state of Telangana. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, I would like to be very, very brief. I know that uh, people have uh, uh, more engagements after this and uh, at, uh, uh, I, I, I am sincerely thankful to each one of you to have uh, not just uh, uh, believed in uh, the state government and, the, and being a part of our journey. Uh, all the numbers and the story that we shared is only possible with the participation uh, uh, of the private sector and we foresee that uh, in the food processing sector we would require uh, all of your support going forward uh, and uh, would like to invite uh, other investors from across the uh, country and the world to come and see it for yourself. Uh, 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 we uh, believe in uh, uh, with uh, leading by example so, uh, and that is the reason why we had this panel here share their views uh, and uh, I, I can assure you that uh, uh, your experience would not be very different from what has been shared on this dais. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, we would like to very quickly uh, felicitate uh, the panelists here and, uh, uh, and thank everybody for making time for this session. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Akhil, for being a great moderator for the session. I would like to express my gratitude to our esteemed speakers and audience, without whom the session would not have been possible. Your collective insights, expertise, and uh, enthusiasm are the driving force behind our mission to shape the future of the food industry, both in India and across the globe. Now I request Mr. Akhil to please present uh, the memento and the shawl to our distinguished guests, please. Thank you, Mr. Akhil and the speakers. Now I request Mr. Varun Arora from MOFP to also facilitate our guests with a small gift, please.
Thank you, Mr. Varun. I once again thank our speakers, our guests, and the audience. And without further ado, let us embark on this journey of collaboration, innovation, and exploration as we delve into the world of food processing at World Food India 2023. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'd request everybody to just allow us one photograph with the entire team, sir. Yeah. Okay.